credits that you may require to save a home, buy a home, buy an asset, help a business. The credits at the university, being the, the national, we call nations universities, those certificates have two sides to them. The private side, being the currency of the society, but also the reverse, being the public side, meaning it's public money. Public money of an alternate society. Any alternate society that recognises public money. Now, what, what do I mean by public money? If you live in America, Canada, Australia, any society in the world, there are two currency systems operating in tandem, public and private. The Fed Reserves are private money producers. So public money is the type of money that is involved in all statutes. Now, the, the, the difference is that public money is measured in cents, the fractions of the dollar. And then the private money is the notes measured in whole numbers. So what you're dealing with, if you take America, is a giant money laundering system, or Australia, or Canada, or anywhere else. It's a giant money laundering system. A private bank is producing a private currency and then washing it through the public money system, and the public are saying, yes, we agree. So what does this mean? It means that when the system is in place, there is an interface in our system, not just to purchase credits and convert, but also in certificates and instruments to also see the currency as public money. So it's very exciting. I know that many of you would be extremely excited about this and, and, and keen, but it all needs to be done properly. And of course, that takes time. It takes thorough testing, and it takes um, well, it takes more days. So that's everything I want to cover tonight. I hope the new information in terms of the role of the executors, um, the role of the amicus curiae, the deep history, where there is in fact remedy in their system, and let's not lose hope of the fact that there is remedy an example of them using it, albeit in a perverted way, and we will continue. I know this may frustrate people, but as we learn, we will continue to reflect that learning. So this nothing that we're doing is supposed to be, when it comes to remedy at least, written in stone. We will always apply the learning and the lessons and the proof that we find. So please keep an eye out on the updates of the sections. Please check them out. Please go back to the sites and, and read. And if you are struggling with information, I suggest the forums on uk.info, uh, which is uh, university.uk.info, please go and have a look. Uh, and if you get stuck, if it's a, a, a last-ditch effort, yes, please email. But remember that my time at the moment, given there's getting now less than eight months left, is very, very tight. And I do seek to answer every email that people send to me, but I have said to many of you, I'm sorry, but in the next few months, it's going to be very difficult for me, other than these forums, to be able to answer your questions. So thanks again, and I look forward to questions tonight. Thanks again. All right, Frank, great. Thank you very much. And uh, just as a reminder for everyone on the phone line, if you'll press star eight, just put yourself in the question queue and we can get to your questions on the phone. And uh, we do have a few questions from the chat that we can get started with, Frank. Um, <clears throat> first question, when the state is charging the trust, in what capacity do you want to stand in as the living man, beneficiary, executor, uh, one or all or two of those three? Okay, good question. Um, I, have a, I, deep, I have a deep respect for the, the work and the pioneering work of the free man movement and the sovereign movement that proceeds where we are and the recognition that the courts can only recognise corporations and that the concept that if one stands up and declares themselves a living man, then technically the court has no jurisdiction. 
the only problem about that is that the courts in the last 10 years have adjusted themselves to that and actually have briefed the judges and briefed the prosecutors on how to circumvent and overcome that argument. So now it's the same as when someone is stopped by a traffic policeman and goes down the route that I am a sovereign and by what right. The police are now taught that they are perfectly within their rights to taser a person like that, to arrest them, hit them, whatever they need to do, take them back to the station and that the society will support them. So I'm concerned that the claiming of a living man is not exactly an enmity, it's a diversion. It's an attempt to circumvent. Whereas when one appoints an executor, either themselves or someone else, and it can be done orally, it doesn't, paperwork is just a memoriam. It can be done orally in court. It doesn't have to be done through paper. Paper is just a way of doing it before you get to court. Then that at least in the hands of a competent man or woman is a way to argue on the matter of the fact that the case is a trust. So I would always suggest, in mind of what I've said, always suggest if you are competent or you know someone who is competent who can amicus curiae for you, then I would go down the executor approach and I would never attempt to do the living man approach anymore because the courts have learned from it and it now means reflexively they almost certainly as they are doing many times now putting people in prison and remand simply because that is a red flag and they just simply put them away until they stop playing that whether that's fair unfair it doesn't matter that's what the courts do Okay. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Frank. Uh, next question: How do we start a community that can be assigned an EIN? Excellent question. Now, I, I, I've spoken about the, the the steps that we're going to take in terms of supporting communities, and of course, um, you've all been waiting patiently for, for the proof of that. the The challenge is this. For a community to actually have any real oomph and, and any real help, the currency support needs to be in place. I mean, yes, it's nice to get together and, and talk about things and, and share, but at the end of the day, a community is about living, thriving, surviving, getting back on your feet, growing, supporting, and protecting. So currency and energy is a crucial part of that. The other thing, of course, is the charters. Now... The charters for the Globe Union and for the unions have been uh, progressively updated and perfected, and there's still some work to be done on them. The universities and the provinces have been, the generic models have been updated, and then down to the campus. And it's at the campus level, which we would normally call, say, a, a, a county, that we ask people to consider forming their community. So with that in mind, there's nothing stopping you setting up a email group or setting up a Skype chat group or setting up any other forum that allows you to communicate together and then start to uh, find people with similar interests to this and start to establish that form of communication. The only thing that's missing at the moment, and by the way, without that, you know, without people willing to form a community, you're not going to have a community. So that's the hardest part. What's missing is these tools that are still being perfected. And, and I, again, I'm sorry for the time it's taking, but it's not about doing it quickly. It's about doing it right. And it's taken certainly more weeks than I expected. So anyone that wants to form a community, really it's about starting some way of sharing the experience, coming together, and communicating. That's what I would suggest is what needs to happen first. Very good. Thank you, Frank. 
Uh, just as a reminder for the callers that are on the phone, if you press star 8 and put yourself in the question queue, if you have questions, we'll get to your questions. Uh, the next question we have, Frank, is once we have submitted our EDTs, to keep the tax agency off our backs, what is your thought about starting a living trust and filing 1041? Okay. Good question. Oh, by the way, something I missed on the previous question, it was specific to an EIN. Yes, um, EIN. And, I would be, I, I, and I would say on that part of the question on the EIN, um, an EIN is for a trust and it's only when a community has a charter as a campus that there is a trust in place for the community. So you can't get your EIN until you have your charter of a campus registered as a community. So that's why you've got to wait until the charter, okay? Well, and Frank, um, along with that, is there yes. a certain number of folks that, you need, uh, that would need to uh, start that community? And I'm not sure that that's actually been addressed, but um, would, would you say there's a certain number that would need to get that started? Absolutely. Absolutely, there's a minimum requirement. And I would say to you that, that the, the minimum requirement in order to um, uh, obtain and register your your community as a uh, beginning uh, must be uh, 12 permanent uh, adult members, a, effectively a, uh, a jury. And in terms of, of um, legal recognition, in almost all cases, it would need to be a tribunal of juries. So it would need to be a minimum of 36. Now, I know that's a lot of people, but but you know if we're going to get into you know a community being able to hold court uh, and perform as a proper community, then um, certainly at 36 is terms of the legal, uh, 12 yes and currency, but there's no way a community can uh, manage its own bank account and function until it gets to a minimum of 36. So we haven't we haven't covered those things yet. So I, I want to come back to that. Um, in terms of different types of trust, I, re I really, I, re I really want to hope that people have time to read. There's a lot of stuff on Eucadia and, and a lot of stuff on One Heaven, and, and people write to me and say, "Look, where do I go? It's it's almost overwhelming." I am sorry, there's so much there. It, it takes time, but I'd say to anyone that's asking about um, particular remedy through Express Trust, Living Trust, which is Intervivos Trust and other remedies that are offered and discussed by other people and even amongst the system itself, please go and have a look at positive law, the canons of positive law, and please go and have a look at the structure of trusts in accordance with Eucadia. Because what we're doing is we are offering you, in fact, we're just offering you, we're, we're demonstrating a, a system where a trust structure is formed that no one, absolutely no one in their system can touch the property or the trust. No one. It's untouchable. Now, will it stop them? No. But legally, is it untouchable? Lawfully, is it untouchable? Absolutely, it is. And that is the structure of a divine trust and a true trust. Now, I won't repeat it now because I want to get through the questions, but for that caller that asked the question about the living trust and the um, the um, tax registration method, please go and have a look at Divine Trust and True Trust on positive law. And if you're not satisfied with that, by all means, come back. But the answer to that question is please go and read. We're not here to support the status quo. And there's a substantial, incredible work that's been done in establishing a trust system that is untouchable by the existing system. Okay? Okay, Frank, thank you very much. Um, I, I believe that that pretty much touched on on uh, the corporate side of the tax system for uh, that, that trust process there. So if they'll go have a look at that, it may help clear up those type of questions. Um, next question we have is, if a bank won't start a special deposit account for our trust, Will a non-interest-bearing account be the same? 